Um, there are other approaches that the reads that we get. They can be front end, they can be a back end for a region data sequence. They get sequence quality reduces as we progress it along the length. So we need to compromise that at, at what point we want to stop the sequencing to take place. So typically like uh Illumina counting these sequences say hundreds of one basis at both ends. And it can actually go beyond, but it's not going to be useful because all the information that we get might not be reliable. So what we the fact is option is we have a chunk of the sequence of the DNA, and we read the front end, we read the back end, and we have an approximate idea of what is the insert length in between. So the, so based on this information, we then align that to a sequence sequence and every alignment happens in an in an in an in a fashion that we would not be expected. Then it can be a deletion or an insertion as the case is. Similarly, if we know that the genome sequence 12 times on average on every region, and we find that a certain region and a line of that is having more than 12, maybe 24, then we know that this is a region of duplication or maybe copy number variation. And then there's sort of split read method where a read, read itself is split at certain region being aligned to other region and the other region to other region. And there are many of those. It is of the coverage. So based on that, a lot of the softwares are available openly, and I also developed certain softwares. One is called the NSET, massive string of sequence, exhaustive comparison tool, which has been fine about the copy number variation and this is uh, yeah. so this is um, the NSET plot different coloration during the because the percentage identity that we got and the alignment between which states the these are not present in one genome and present in another genome, uh, these kind of things. And the genome break, which doesn't look much into the problem in the way, it just looked at the structural variation of insertion and deletion kind of thing. So this is all the information based on the of any set and genome break plot. And like the previous speaker, I also compared the cellular sequence, which is the JPEG vector genome 50%, 40% coming from 180 tomatoes, to the NCB average 36 genome assembly at that point. And until a decade ago in 2003, we thought that the genome of any two random individuals would be 99.9% similar. Um, so when I did the analysis of cellular versus one uh, versus the synthetic, I realized that this percentage doesn't seem to be what I read the textbook or what the people were saying. We should have looked to the correct. And so I reported to uh, people I worked for. And they published a paper that the genome is less than 99.9%, approximately 99.5% cellular of two random individuals. It was a bit upsetting basically because well, my name was not there in the paper in 2007. So I did a further analysis and published another article that. <coughs> Genomes are less than 99.5% sensor based on these comparisons. <coughs> so essentially, the deep analysis of that copy number based on certain loci or region of interest. Of we can put the question to the So, the loci of, of our region can be then mapped. Then, we which is what we can know about getting the information. <coughs> <laughs> Why is it talking about what the genome mapping, proteome mapping, all these things, bioinformatics, computer science? Why is it so can get so hot topic? Why are we sitting here? <coughs> For simple reason that we know that we know that this these certain uh, genome markers are associated associated with certain genes. We can make certain analogy with another people's um, you know genome analysis. We have also heard about GWAS, genome wide association studies, so the work that can be done. And first two tracing. If I have a variation, probably I got it from my father or mother, or whatever the case be, and they also got it probably from their father and mother, so we can trace it in certain fashion. Um, so we can most the, the, the variation can be harmless if it doesn't uh, affect the regulation of the gene or the coding section of the gene itself. Um, or it can be harmful, such as those which are fairly established, such as the idea one, the other two is the best cancer, 
and then there are heart diseases, diabetes, and heart diseases, uh, you know, three of all of them, and three of schizophrenia, all these kind of diseases are really very interesting to them. There have been a lot of genetic research done trying to link the markers that can be, can be attributed to these diseases. And these can be actually data sets well, that they can become active only under exposure to certain ex physical external conditions or on the intake of certain kind of, uh, uh, you know, food, food habits and all People can be carriers that they are not actually disease persons, but when they mate with someone else, uh, obviously all the sex, and the offspring might combine to get the disease. So those kind of information can be extracted from this kind of genome analysis. And of course, they can also be recently you know, people have also started to look at the traits and characteristics extraction, why people at all, why people some people can be can be aware. We have a medical doctor who is also a biomedician or a medical scientist. He can categorize people into subgroups like this and advise them accordingly, or give them a personalized, customized medicine or treatment or suggestion accordingly. So we are all living with this. So we are all living with the our near and dear ones who are suffering from one of the major diseases. Some of the common diseases are like autism. Diabetes, cancer, schizophrenia. And there are so many people around us who are suffering from chronic diseases. And even the people who are called healthy, they might also sometimes get some diseases on the other. But there is definitely a misuse of this variation that can be done. And you could have health insurance company. If they get to know that this person is likely to get affected by such diseases, you know, they will jeopardize, jeopardize this. Insurance. Um, the employer and human resources, they will also keep track of this. These are things we have to be aware, uh, be aware of. And uh, relations like marriage or people, you know, you get to know about your girlfriend or boyfriend, if he's going to have certain kind of um, genetic problems eventually, uh, that might also be, be, be an issue which people think and you know, inform decisions later. There's also concern that these people who are not that educated. They might misinterpret the genetic results, variation results, and which uh, a disease which can actually happen at some stage, or uh, you might interpret that, oh, I'm suffering from this disease, and it can be a psychological issue. So these are, these are the things that we need to take care of. So typically, so is gene, genome analysis the only, the only solution? No, it's not. Because if we have an identical twin, someone is raised in America, another person is raised in China, or, or maybe or Europe, it's not just the genome, it's your upbringing, how you do a network, what you meant, what your background is, what the exposure is. So it's, so it's not a single silver bullet to solve everything, but it does give us clues for certain, certain um, directions. So genome break was used for comparing a family of four people, the father, this is A number 5A, the mother, B, C is the daughter, and D is also the daughter. And the, it was compared to a lesser genome, and the result of the genome based software. And using this, we can extract out the SNPs uh, and variation. Uh, zoom in a bit. If I zoom in, these are the SNPs at certain loci. I'm sorry, injured at certain loci. And these are the SNPs at certain loci of the curve. And if we do a population wide uh, analysis, such as this, we also found out a northern region in the Dutch population. Um, which is not present in any database. So we can get, link this particular model region to Dutch affected uh, population. And that, that was, uh, this was, this was, this was, this was informatically, <coughs> and it was uh, confirmed by Beta PCR techniques. And for example, I simply take out a keto uh, DNA when some other group. And compare the uh, Y chromosome SNPs. So we find that the SNPs found in the father is far higher than the mother. And in the two child, the SNPs are compared to that from the mother. So we can actually say that the child which is to be born is going to be female. So we don't need to do extensive and you know maybe the injurious uh, you know technology otherwise. 
So this is what I will do with every insertion position. And I found that the variations are the comparison is much higher. The differences are much higher. So we from this research we can propose that the structural variations are more more uh, restricted, they have more selection pressure to change it. And structural variations such as FD or insertion deletion, they are more characteristic signature of what brain health whatever that the next. So here is an example. I think the mitochondria we have four family people, father, mother, and the two daughters. And it is known in literature earlier that the mitochondrial DNA is maternal inherited in humans. There has been a case uh, reported that mitochondrial DNA can be either maternally inherited, uh, such as in banana, but never in humans. But I'm proposing that the same possible the mitochondrial DNA can be even maternally inherited. It is their witness found in father and is found in one of the mothers, uh, one of the doctors, and also the mother. So this, this, this is the power of informatics, which people have to do expensive, expensive, you know, design, experimental design of microscopy and all those things. And then they came up with a conclusion that the sperm has resonated with the, the, the ovary and the, the tail goes off and that mechanism sometimes fails and so mitochondrial DNA can be sometimes measured even from the father. So this was the, the discovery I made the first time for mitochondrial DNA. And there was also one structural variation found in the mother and one daughter, and not found in one of the daughters. That was also very disturbing to know. So, this is conclusion. So, we get, get to know that the genome file for your brain can be a more deterministic and more cost effective, and at least it can guide us to a certain direction uh, when we are doing the analysis, it can, such as the sex determination. And uh, I also suppose that mitochondrial DNA can have better than we get of inheritance. And one thing that I didn't talk over here, but I can tell you now, that whenever we do, we do organ transplants, like converting you know, kidney transplant or something like that, there is a fair possibility of that organ transplant to go as a failure. And the reason for that is the immunological effects, consequence of that, the result of it. So that means that if we can do a, a pre analysis, by looking at the MSC domain, which is responsible for immunological effects in, in human beings, that is in HLA, loci, or chromosome 6. And we see that if these people don't have much of the variations in the MSC region, then that's a good hint that this organ transplant can be successful. So that's the power of analysis, um, where we are all getting towards more um, you know, artificial intelligence and these things. And this thing I just told repeatedly that variations can be mapped to traits, phenotypes, diseases, and there's rather a degree of confidence. We can't say that this is still good. If you have good sense, you are going to suffer with it. There is certain confidence based on what we already have observed from the database uh, that such a certain percentage of people have been reported for this kind of phenotype. And the last thing that I mentioned that structural variations are more a specific characteristic of an individual. Uh, they are more a characteristic signature for a trait or disease that we take than the sense. Okay. That is the description. These are references from my own publication, but some from the other publication, which is not from the game I mentioned. And that, that's my contact email ID if you want to get back to me. And that's my website where you get to know more about the software and the world. So the, the percentages that have been reported, those are too random in user. Obviously, when you took up take a very unhealthy person who is suffering from loss of disease, for example, they have a very person who is suffering from liver disease, heart disease, diabetes, any number of diseases that one suffering. Okay. Then obviously you will have big sections of genome or gene region, gene regulatory region that will be missing 
Thank you.